the International Space Station of today is not just a unique science lab with a great number of opportunities. The altitude of the ISS orbit and its technical equipment make the orbiting station a kind of spaceport suitable for launching small satellites. One more satellite is going to be launched by the Japanese manipulator system. Standing by. Launch is about 30 seconds away. Microsatellites are launched into outer space with the help of a special launching device equipped with a powerful spray. Three, two, one, go. The satellite is a go. Okay, we are going to see it now through a different window. Here they go. Great. Astronauts kept watching the flight of these tiny space vehicles for a long time. The scope of their performance is in no way inferior to that of standard-sized satellites put into orbit with a carrier rocket. Today, they are used for the most various purposes, communications and environmental monitoring, photo survey and remote observation of the Earth, educational projects and science experiments. Russian crews launched microsatellites during work in outer space. But proposals have been made to build a separate launching station based on the Russian segment of the ISS. If this project comes to life, footage like this is likely to become a regular in the coverage of orbital expeditions. you are invited to witness a truly rare space operation. Relocation of a manned Soyuz spacecraft. Separation confirmed. Copy. We have a visual on the separation process, checking the timer, turning on manual control mode. Confirm, copy. Separation confirmed, copy. Following the safety rules, the entire crew in their in-flight spacesuits take their places in the spacecraft for the period of relocation. Mikhail Kornienko and Scott Kelly fly the Soyuz for the last time. They will make the return trip back to Earth in March 2016 on a different vehicle. To make room on the docking port for that spacecraft, astronauts are flying now from one Russian module to another. The roll maneuver initiated left at 45 degrees. Copy. Real King is I use is not an ordinary event. Not every crew has to deal with this task. You have to pilot the spacecraft away from the station, make a turn, fly around the ISS, and dock to another module. About 28 meters left to the station. Copy. After passing the 30 meter mark, don't align with the target. Stand by for changing the position of the station. Copy. Because of the short distance to the orbital station, relocation is always performed under manual control, as opposed to nominal space flights when the core's rendezvous system is in charge. But using cores in this instance would result in spending much more time and fuel. Redocking is one of the very few examples when the manual control is preferred. In most other cases, the spaceship performs everything in autopilot mode. This is the result of constant update of the most famous space vehicle, the Russian Soyuz. It's a, a bit like with our cars, you know. You look at it and the body might stay the same, but 
Once every three, four or five years, a new rig is uh, produced and you have these different car models. You get in one of them and it's not even equipped with AC and another one would have parking sensors and everything. Now we have computers everywhere, so there's a constant update. Probably it's not so good for astronauts as they get fewer opportunities for piloting. The spaceship is becoming more and more independent. Your pitch, your pitch angle is too big, I think. I see that, I'm slowing down, only, only I, I don't see the target. Okay, I see it now, it's slowing down. 15 degrees more, yeah, I've got the target just now. Next, the spacecraft commander needs to carefully approach the station and align precisely with the docking port. Just to remind you, the entire maneuver is performed under manual control. Only an experienced space pilot can handle this operation. Contact. We feel contact very smooth. Very smooth. Copy. Capture confirmed. Copy, contact and capture. Contact. Let's have a look at the space operation in accelerated mode. Eighteen minutes of flight, seen in only 18 seconds thanks to modern technology. Sport and physical education for astronauts are the part of daily routine, one of our professional duties. Today, my crew and I are going to show you our space gym, show you how everything is functioning here in weightlessness, and explain to you why it is important here. Welcome to our cosmic training. Let's start with the American segment. Hello, Scott. Hi. So, my dear friends, we are in Nod 3, in the American segment, where the IRED is located, our training machine for strength and exercise. It is multifunctional for all types of muscles. It is a very good one, but very complicated to use. That is why we have been trained before in Houston. We had like 14 classes to become able to manage it to avoid any mistakes. Unfortunately, we had some. We had, that is, because the stress is huge. We had to practice a lot before not to hurt ourselves or not to break the machine. The next exercise is called the heel race. It is for the heels, obviously. We need special equipment for this. I, I, I'm going to show you now. There's a little platform. We stand on the toes here. And we start our exercise. We put the barbell a little bit higher, under my shoulders, so like this only my heels are exercising. The next exercise needs other types of equipment. 
We move this thing after a heel race and put this little bench that we will need to do some push-ups. It's just like this. And we again need to fix it in the same holes. We put the barbell a little bit lower. I will set the weight needed. And we can start this exercise, which is going to be next. This exercise is called the shoulder press. As you understand, it is for the shoulders. It is being done like this. I like this one most, because you can see the earth from there. We call it the uh, window to the world. And when I'm doing this exercise, I see the earth below. It is like looking from a plane window, although we are flying at a speed of 8 kilometers per second, but the angle speed is almost the same as in a plane because we are flying 400 kilometers high. It is a double pleasure. You exercise and enjoy the view. Like our partners say, amazing. Let's start the next set of exercises. We do not need this bench anymore. This one will be for our torso. These are very good functional machines that help us keep fit and healthy during the long space flight. I hope to come to fly home in a good, strong physical state and try to walk using my legs and feet. Thanks to the sport, I can practice here. So let's go to the treadmill, to the Nod 2 module. It is on the wall, according to the station's coordinates. But it doesn't really matter. You see how easy I got onto the wall? To make it easy for you to understand, we will turn the camera now so you can imagine that I am running on the floor. I want you to pay attention to the fact that it is being held on isolated barks. The whole structure is isolated, so it does not transmit the pressure to the main body of the station. It is rather sophisticated construction with digital controls. We see the track. With the remote that is there on the computer, we even have photos here. We settle the program for the training. There's my face right here. I'm very proud of it. There are different settings with difficult levels of pressure. You choose the one you need now, and we start training. To run here, like on the earth, you need to stand on it. For this, we put this harness, as we call it. It is fixed here on the wall. And with these things, we attach ourselves to the treadmill. We can regulate the level of tightness with the computer as well. It is about 70% of your weight. So if I'm 75 kilos, I attach myself with the weight of 55 kilos. Now we will tell you about the training machines that are located in the Russian segment of the station. I wanted to tell you how 
we are running here, how we are practicing sport here. The treadmill is a, a very necessary thing here in the conditions of weightlessness. We pay a special attention to it. So while we cycle or using IRAD around every two days, we run every day. And three weeks before the landing, all the exercises except running are finished. We only run twice a day. As you see, this treadmill is not attached to the main body. It is running. You can even hear to all the sides. Actually, it is all the same as in your gym, except the fact that we have to imitate gravity here to run. We use a harness like this, with the hooks, I attach it here. It is the system of attaching that I will use to run. I enter my profile. What do I need for my training? The pressure I need during the running. This will keep me attached to avoid flying up because I am in conditions of weightlessness and you see that I will be flying up all the time. And here's my running schedule. Everything is settled. You see, I am attached already. The level of pressure is settled as well. I press the start button then and start my training. How can I explain running on a board? You see it is moving, so you have to have a good cardio system, but also a good balancing skill, so that you can move more or less straight. It is very important to correctly adjust the system to oneself, so that the load is distributed equally. It is like running with a school bag on earth. But imagine that the bag is 50 to 60 kilos in weight. It is not easy. It will be like this here if the pressure is not equal. The whole body will hurt soon. Your spine, your feet. It is very important. I am like moving in a passive way right now. It is one of the functions, the treadmill is stable. I stay and it stays. And I am pushing it myself with my strength. Or I can run faster and further. Everything depends on me and my speed. There is also a normal treadmill running function here, like you do in your own gym there on Earth. The treadmill is moving itself and I have to run and follow the rhythm. It is obvious that for us it is necessary, but it's just difficult physiologically without any exercise. Everyone who goes to the gym, the swimming pool, or whatever must remember the feeling when you finish your training, when you have done everything you plan to do and even more, when you prove that you are stronger than your unwillingness or laziness and that you won. Here in Cosmos, it is all the same. You are flying, you are feeling comfortable and then you go to the treadmill. That is pushing you, pressing you, and you have to work hard for the next 40 minutes. On the space station, people have completely different rules and laws, different from those on the Earth. There are no long winter holidays and official days off are only Saturdays and Sundays. The main holiday is obviously Cosmonautics Day. But on the space station, they still pay much attention to our traditions and always get ready for celebrating New Year. Dear friends, this station is our cosmic home and it also needs cleaning as a normal house. 
Here we are in the conditions of weightlessness and everything has its own space specifics. Let's start with our dining table. We have here breakfast, lunch and dinner. Here for cleaning we use these sanitary wipes for surfaces. We clean it every Saturday. We use such wet towels to wipe the table uh, that we use all week. This way it is uh, a special liquid. There are many spots on the panels that have to be removed. Weightlessness is weightlessness and unfortunately spots appear all the liquids are flying tea and juices, sometimes even soup. All this must be removed, erased, like, like this. As I have said, we work in weightlessness, eat in weightlessness, and during the meals, here is the proof that we work in the conditions of weightlessness. All the forks, spoons, cans are flying away from the table and we need a lot of the soldier's ingenuity, so to say. In this case, it is our cosmic ingenuity. We use a tape like this. I'm going to show you how it works. We take a piece of gray tape. It is sticky on one side. Well, it's ordinary tape that they send us and it helps a lot. We put it into the workplace here, like this, like this. And after we fix it here, I will show you the final result later in order not to distract your attention for a long time. And we have a TV in the kitchen, everything like at home. So our table is washed, ready for a new working week. That's how it looks after our actions. See how simple it is? Put, put a spoon and they will not fly anywhere. Wish us bon appetit? Well, of course, we need to clean the whole module, not only the table. Today we have a day off, and as always we do at home on a Saturday, we clean everything here. Vacuum cleaning is very, very important. As on Earth, there is a, a lot of dust. It accumulates everywhere, in the filters, here, there. We need to clean everywhere. And the walls are covered with a special type of fabric. You see, the reverse side is nappy and is easy to hook it here. You see, everything hangs very, very nicely. And on the other hand, it is perfect to uh, accumulate dust. You see, at the slightest touch, it reveals a cloud of dust which gets to your nose and eyes. Therefore, cleaning is an essential part of our flight. Here we have a vacuum cleaner. As you can see, it has a special construction. Here is a wire. You see how long it is? Because we do not have many sockets. The vacuum cleaner is, of course, very different from those at the previous stations. Uh, Salute, Mir. If you have watched the old videos, you remember how the astronauts use an airstream from the vacuum cleaner to fly over the station. We unfortunately do not have such an opportunity after making a membrane nozzle, so the cleaner throws air, but it is twisting like that. You will see it when we start. So, let's start now. Here's our dust filter. You can see it on the screen. We clean it almost every two days if possible, if we have a cleaner. You see how much dust has accumulated already? The ceiling fan throws air into my cabin. Well, that is why I'm taking so much care of it. Like this, we, of course... The, the vacuum cleaner produces a lot of noise. You can hear it, but this is what we have. 
Normally, we use this overlay to clean the dust filters. When, when I will vacuum the walls, I'll take another one. I use the fact that we are weightless here, so I'm able to hang on to the ceiling and clean it there in a much more comfortable way. I am hung there on the ceiling. Here I release the vacuum cleaner and it begins to rotate slowly. I grab it with my leg so it does not disturb me. And here go the dust filters. Of course, dirt accumulates here and dust, so we clean it every week. When the cargo ship arrives, then the dust accumulates much faster. So we have to change the filters or to clean every unit here. I have changed the nozzle and now it is time for me to clean directly the panels where the hair and dust are accumulated. So we vacuum everything that is covered here with this fabric. We are in FGB module now. These grills have to be cleaned from time to time. We use the same vacuum cleaner. And we do it step by step. Oops, away. Step by step. So, here we are. The panels are getting clean from dust. The air primarily goes in here, and of course, the dust is being collected. Here, you can see how it flies, the dust. And in fact, this is the cleaning we do every Saturday. Not only these panels, but all the other vents. We need to take care of our cosmic home and, of course, of our health. That's the way we do it. Everything has been cleaned. The station is absolutely clean now and ready for the next working week. Today, we would like to tell you about our cargo ship progress that we always look forward to seeing because this ship not only brings us food, new equipment for experiments, new materials that we then use to repair the station, it also brings air, water. Also, we use the engines of the cargo ship already docked at the station to adjust the orbit and to do evasive maneuvers from the shards. A very important function performed by the cargo ship is, of course, a garbage disposal. A person in space produces around as much waste and garbage as he does it on Earth. We usually pack our garbage in these bags, yeah, so we put cans here. After that, the bags you see in front of me, we usually remove them before shooting. We are recommended to do it. But we put it here, a rubber bag, and once it is full, we seal it like this, and here it is. The bag is ready, and we put it in the cargo ship. We grab all kinds of garbage here, wet and dry. There are other containers here under the table. You can see a trash bin in which we throw only dry items, paper, plastic bags. And then when it's filled up, we carry it out to the cargo ship. Now there are two cargo ships docked to the station. One to the docking segment and the other one 
to the power station. It is behind me right now. It is fully unloaded already, and I would like to show you how it looks inside. So now, I am on the cargo ship Progress. You see, it is completely unloaded. Here we have some containers with a small, small amount of cargo, but this is how it looks like. Here are some more containers. Here, we have a, a special device to pump water and to the supply air or oxygen from the tanks of, of Progress. After it is completely unloaded, we normally start to fill it with our garbage and prepare it for undocking. As I said, the second cargo ship we have docked to the docking segment. You can now have a look at it. It is perfectly visible from the window. You can see its corrective engines. After a few weeks, it will undock and burn up in the dense layers of the atmosphere. So, we could tell you for sure that the astronauts do not produce litter. All the rubbish is burnt in the dense layers of the atmosphere while returning to Earth, at a temperature of 2,000 degrees. Well, now I would like to invite you inside the loaded, perfectly prepared for undocking progress. Of course, everything here is filled with garbage, so there's no free space. I'm not even always able to enter here, of course, but... Now, me and Misha, we will try to show you and, and tell you a little bit about it. You see almost no space already. Everything is done, obviously, taking into account alignment in order not to break it. We try to keep it symmetry. Heavy things in front of heavy things. Well, you see, there are some blocks of cleaning columns and some buckets, used buckets and old linen and little bags of garbage. Today, we have an especially stressful but joyful day. Our New Year cargo ship that carries gifts, letters from our families, New Year greetings from all MCC. It comes today. And of course, today we have to work hard, but we are glad. The ship is following us right now. It has to reach the station, and we are going to see it now from the bottom windows. Here you can see it's coming from the back right to our docking segment to dock there to bring us our stuff. a parcel from the family. You have no idea how important it is for us here. It is truly a New Year present. You even cannot imagine. What a great pleasure it is for us, a little plastic Christmas tree during the New Year holidays. Here in orbit, it is a sign. It is a sign, firstly, because the New Year is coming soon, and if it is soon, that means that me and Sergei, we have only two months left here. Nine months. I have been here. Two more left. And now we will get ready for the New Year's party. It is a very pleasant part.
Итак, мы пришли. So, we are at home. Our working module. We set the Christmas tree. And begin to unpack. What do we have here? New Year presents. Here we have such snowmen. We will dress them up. Crackers and cookies. Postcards with Happy New Year. Well, they are, of course, from the wives, from the family. This is honey, my friends, real honey. I would recommend it to everyone. By the way, very convenient packaging for space. These packs are one time, small for one bite, or so to say, if you take a larger pack, the honey begins to flow out in the conditions of weightlessness, begins to stick and it's awful. So my wife has solved the problem this way. These little crunches are a very good thing. We all like them. I would like to draw your special attention to the fact that all our foreign friends here like these Russian crackers. They really love them. Here is a sample of a normal package. Each one receives two containers like these, an additional one from our group of psychological support. The girls provide us with additional rations. These include fruits, oranges, tangerines, grapefruit, apples, and even onion. So, we will have a splendid dinner according to our space standards. We will celebrate here, in this module, the whole crew. We will make a dinner. We have been sent, as I have shown you already, some grapefruits, some oranges, tangerines. But of course, space leaves its mark on everything. Instead of our national dish herring under a fur coat, we have here beets with garlic. Oh, rather similar, isn't it? Here. Well, presents, parcels from family, from, from MCC, from the Earth, they will make our evening special. Happy New Year, dear friends, all of the crew of ISS wish you happiness, luck, love, all the good things in the new 2016 year. Now, I am in the service module which is often, in addition to everything else, is our space studio. And today, our crew will tell you how the studio works. You will learn how we shoot our stories and see how we send them back to the Earth. So you can see it all simply by turning on the television. Photos and videos from the International Space Station allow us to do the impossible. Look at our planet from a height of several hundred kilometers. At least we can virtually visit the places to where, for many reasons, it is so hard to get for man. Everything that you see in our TV project is shot by the astronauts. Almost every day, the space station crew conducts a chronicle of the extraordinary experiments in the history of the ISS. It's morning on a day off aboard the International Space Station. Mikhail Kornienko is drinking coffee from the space coffee package. Sergei Volkov is already shooting the Earth through the service module windows. The crew learned to work with the various photo and video devices on Earth while training during special classes. After all, shooting is an integral part of an orbital expedition. 
At the station, there is no day without taking a picture. Go on. When can we start? Go on. And do not forget to shoot the hands. Well, say something for our viewers, please. Dear friends, so we have started the shooting a few minutes before the undocking. Six, five, four, start. Mikhail, copy that. Yeah, I understand. We are ready. Whoa, whoa, we are ready. Let's get started. We usually do the shooting together. One astronaut works as an operator, and the other one is in the frame. But there are occasions when we do the shooting alone. And you have already seen such videos more than once in the next chapter of a year in space TV project. Then the cosmonaut picks up the camera like this. And goes with it to the module where the shooting is planned. He shoots and comments everything that he shoots and what is happening in the shot at this point. This is a large module. When you fly around it, it is by our standards on the floor. And this is like a cave to make you understand we fly, fly, fly. It is like being inserted vertically into a subway car. Sometimes when we put the camera stationary, we push the record button and work in the shot. Here is how this can be done in weightlessness. There is a camera, there is weightlessness, there is a bracket that we use specifically for fixing the camera. We fix the camera, fasten it, and point the camera to the desired position. Something like this. Open. The camera's monitor, as you can see, rotates in any direction. And if I work alone, if I work alone, in order to control the shot, I point it to myself. After that, I turn on the camera. During the filming of a year in space TV project, Mikhail Kornienko many times had to work alone, mounting the camera on a special bracket or moving with it around the station. Weightlessness sometimes complicates the shooting. A space cameraman has to have something to hold on to. But when the astronaut shoots while moving, special conditions, on the contrary, help to keep the desired frame. In weightlessness, you do not need special systems and devices to stabilize the camera. You should not be afraid that the expensive equipment will fall, and you can experiment as you like. That is how the camera floats and rotates on the station. Now it got stuck on the ceiling. In the frame you will see, you will probably see me. Now you can see the floor, and now Sergei. And right now I send the camera to him. Here in space, we are trying to shoot according to a strict plan. According to the scenario, as we used to say in Earth. Because everything we've shot needs to be sent back to Earth. And if there are large amounts, it will take some time for these videos to reach the viewers. Therefore, we shoot only what we need to and only when we have the time. And now I will show you and tell you how our video reports get to Earth. After filming, we take the camera. Here there is a small compartment in which a flash memory card is inserted. Here we have our videos. We no longer need the camera. Further on, my working tool is the computer. We insert the card into the card reader. And with the help of a special program, we open the material and send it back to Earth. 
There is a convention, or rather a condition, I would say. The video files that we send to the Earth should not exceed two megabytes. Two gigabytes, sorry. Well, this is due to the bandwidth conditions on Earth, so that the channel is not broken. The experts from Earth ask us not to exceed this volume. Some materials, due to the number and size of the video files, are sent to the Earth on the board of the Soyuz. For example, it was like this with the filming of our spacewalk. They were delivered from the ISS with the crew of Gennady Padalka. But we are trying to send most of the videos to the Mission Control Center directly from the station. Italy, Greece, look, do you see this head there? Now we are heading to the Suez Canal. Africa, Red Sea, okay. It is the third time Sergei Volkov is on the space station. And during each flight, the Russian cosmonaut makes a lot of photos. The crew takes pictures of the Earth on a variety of occasions. But judging by the number of pictures of the cosmos, it is never boring. Of course, when you look at reports from the International Space Station, you have probably noticed that we have all kinds of photo and video equipment, lenses, cameras on the walls. And certainly you have a question, why do they have so many? Well, first of all, because you have to solve a lot of different uh, tasks. And each task, of course, sometimes requires a different lens. That is, if we take pictures of the Earth, then of course we need a small lens, right? With the fish eye type, we do not particularly take anything. Maybe it will be just a beautiful picture of the horizon or, or some part of our Earth. Therefore, to work on the experiments that are related to the environment, those are basically the experiments with the study of the oceans or mountains. We use, of course, cameras with large lenses that have a, a focal length of 400 meters, 400 uh, millimeters, 600, 800. This camera, which is flying around me with the converter, it is of 1,200 millimeters. This gives enough good shots that our specialists can and then use to analyze the situation, what is happening in our, our atmosphere or on the Earth during a space flight. Like many modern explorers of the cosmos, Sergei has a page in social networks. He regularly uploads really fascinating, in every sense, unearthly pictures. We offer you to look at our planet through the eyes of astronauts. These images, many of which you will want to call paintings, were taken from space over the most different parts of the Earth. Among them, there are photos taken by Sergei Volkov.
Dear viewers, we receive many questions that you would like to know the answers to. They forwarded them here, and I am now ready to satisfy your curiosity, well, as much as I can. So, the first question is, how many calories a day should an astronaut consume given the lack of gravity and reduced physical activity than when on Earth? Well, I do not quite agree with the statement about physical activity. We sometimes exert ourselves even more here, especially considering the psychological stress, which sometimes takes more energy than physical exertion. But nevertheless, there is a zero gravity, and probably all the same, physically we spend less calories, and our ration is calculated at the rate of around 2,900 calories per day. Perhaps, after all, it is an individual thing, and each person requires a different amount of calories. Someone may gain weight, and you will ask, how is it possible here? But exercises help us to fight it. And, well, a reasonable consumption of products. Actually, we have products with a certain margin, and therefore a certain amount of it is always left. We have a so-called 16-day cycle. This four containers of food, and of course, we do not eat them all. Thus, there is some kind of, well, a buffer stock for us. I personally need much less food here than on Earth. Well, I will repeat, it is an individual thing. What would you like to eat the most now after so many days in space? You know, if I start to read out the entire list, probably it will take a lot of time. I would like to eat fried potatoes with onions and mushrooms. I want scrambled eggs, normal ones, fried eggs on a frying pan, well, or an omelet. I would like to eat cucumbers, both fresh and pickled, which my wife makes. Some are cucumbers, but pickled not with the vinegar, but with the red currant. Those are very good cucumbers, and I was promised that they deliver them to me after landing. Well, with this, we will probably finish discussing my gastronomic predilections. Next question. Why do astronauts always wear white socks? Oh, that's an interesting question, of course, because they deliver them here, white socks. Well, perhaps after all, it somehow aesthetically looks good. Although we have black socks as well, they are just fewer. But I personally like the white socks. Since we do not wear shoes here and do not walk on the floor, these socks, they remain white, clean. Long-term spaceflight is certainly not an easy task. For me personally, it is difficult, not even physically, because I have adapted to the weightlessness very quickly, but psychologically. Here, at the altitude of several hundred kilometers, I miss the Earth very much. I miss home, my loved ones. I miss my daily routine. Everything that is left down there. Space, variety of factors affect the psychological state of a person. Long stays in weightlessness, confined space and distance from Earth, complex work with high risk, 
All this, of course, increases the stress felt by the astronauts during a long flight. Today, they will tell you how to cope with stress and show what psychological support for the crew in the orbit is. Getting used to living in the weightlessness is an individual process, and all the astronauts go through it differently. Someone does not feel well during the first two or three weeks in space. Someone on the contrary almost immediately feels good on board the station. Mikhail Kornienko got used to the weightlessness smoothly and quickly. There was no hard period with all the psychological problems such as nausea and dizziness. It is much more difficult, according to the cosmonaut, to get used to life at the station in psychological terms. Days are often similar to one another despite the variety of tasks. And over time, a person starts missing things he had on Earth. I even miss the smells from Earth. What helps me to distract from the sad thoughts? First of all, there is enough work for any astronaut. Almost every day and even every hour is scheduled and there is always something to do. And of course, the possibility to communicate with Earth helps a lot. The ability to call to the Earth every day, sometimes not only one time a day. Video calls, parcels from home, from my wife, photos of loved ones which each astronaut has in his cabin. Today, the crew is able to call to landlines and mobile phones directly from the space station. Once a week, at the weekends, a communication session with their families is planned. In addition, the astronaut can see their families on their birthdays, during the expeditions, and in the New Year's. But besides that, at the ISS, there are only three weekends, not ten, as on Earth. Now I have a minute of free time. And I will go to my cabin, where I have a laptop, a computer, through which I can call my mother. I will call my family if you don't mind. This is my cabin. Using this headset, pre-enabling it, I can call to the Earth on any cell phone or a home phone. This is what I am going to do now. On my computer, I have a virtual model of the phone, virtual buttons which I use to type, and graphic schedule of communication through satellite. If there is a connection, and now there is, I can call home. This is what I'm doing now. After talking with his wife, Mikhail Kornienko leaves his cabin and goes to the service module to work. A short break is over. At the station, the schedule does not give time for sadness and nostalgia. Most of the free time during the expedition, astronauts make videos and look at the Earth through the windows of the ISS. Looking at the home planet sometimes helps no less than communicating with their loved ones. In the early months of his long flight, Mikhail Kornienko admitted that he missed terrestrial sunrises and sunsets, familiar sounds and smells. The group of psychological support is trying to compensate for the lack of all this as much as possible through a variety of videos and photos from the Earth. Here, there are the views of the Earth, which you probably have already seen. They constantly get into the shot. We have them 
Here, at the time of the shooting. Here, there are simple Earth pictures that remind us of our planet, of things I have not seen for a long time, trees, green grass, water. These would seem such common things that you do not notice on the Earth. And here in space, after several months of the flight, you start to appreciate them and treat them very differently. They sent me this picture at my request. It is just a picture from a calendar, from an ordinary calendar. These are the views of nature. Now, we will replace the old ones that we have here. They get dirty because in weightlessness, everything flies. Here, we will replace them with these new pictures. You pass by them and they make you happier. You feel better when you look at the native village. Pines, lake, river. This was sent to us for the new year. A monkey. The year of the monkey. A Christmas tree. In fact, the group of psychological support deals with such things. And of course, they make our lives here a lot easier. I am very grateful for this. How many liters of water a day does an astronaut drink? On Earth, many use the following formula, 30 grams of water per kilogram of body weight. Is this formula appropriate on the ISS, given the complexity of the delivery of the resources from Earth? Well, I probably would not take into account the complexity of the delivery of the resources, because it is a vital necessity to drink. Therefore, the Earth does not skimp on water delivery. We drink one and a half or two liters of water, well, approximately, depending on the load of the day, just as on Earth. This is without taking into account the water which comes to us with sublimated products that we dilute with water. Well, plus canned food, that is so-called hidden water. In general, we try to drink, of course, a little more here at the station. So there is no... Well, we need to detoxicate the body, so there are no salt deposits, no stagnation in the body. This is why we need to drink more water. Water is life, and they never tell us off for this from the earth. On the contrary, it is recommended to drink more, especially after physical training. So, one more question. Do you suffer from insomnia because there are 16 sunrises and sunsets in a day? How does your body cope with such an unusual thing? You know, it is very easy. We just do not look out the windows, through the windows, because there are 45 minutes in the day, 45 minutes in the night, and of course, it's impossible to sleep in such conditions. We live a normal terrestrial day. We wake up at 6 a.m., we go to sleep at 10 p.m., and get eight hours of sleep. We live according to the Greenwich time, London, meridian. And so, when we go to the cabin, the guys in the SM module close the windows, and you cannot see what is going on outside. I sleep in the Nod 2 module on the ceiling. There are no windows there. So I come in, go to sleep at 10 or 11 p.m., and at 6 a.m. we get up with an alarm. That is an ordinary earthly rhythm of life, regardless of what is happening outside. Something like this, dear viewers.